So a lot of people have a lot of questions about the fact of my ex-wife that I was married to a 90-year-old woman when I was 18 during my homelessness era. So I am going to answer all the questions that were under the post in which I asked you to ask questions about it. If anybody during the stream has any other questions pertaining to the specific situation, you are more than welcome to ask. I'm not going to stop or anything of that variety. I'm just going to answer the questions as they go on through and any answer any questions that were happening during this is going to pop up above me. So here goes that. Now then. This was the saddest 16 minutes and 53 seconds I've ever seen in my life. Love to see that. Thank you. You mentioned you had cancer in a video, and I don't know if you made a video about this before. I have not. I have not made a video at all. I have not made a video about that at all. Uh, but what happened to that? I got rid of it. I beat it. I beat it like a redheaded stepchild over a stove. I beat it so badly that they would say that it was a one-round match, a Mike Tyson knockout of me defeating it inside of my body. It was lung cancer. It ruined the entirety of my body. It ruined me. It hurt. I didn't feel great. Leukemia is what it was. It sucked. I ate every minute of it. It was garbage. Did Margaret help you with that, or did you use the money inherited from her to beat the cancer? No, I didn't really. I don't know. I, that's very specific. I didn't really use the money i use the money to give out to random people my friends things of that variety i gave it to everybody everybody i just gave it to people i gave it to anybody that asked i had so much money at the time that i didn't really care to have it it made me sad to have the money so uh i had beaten it before i beaten beaten cancer still was gang banging and then I proceeded to get kicked out of the house by my mom because I was proceeding to continue to disrespect her and every boundary she had set completely. That's just how I operated back in the day. So there was that. Would you have done anything differently looking back on how your, is your life now? Nope. I would have done the same exact thing. I would have done exactly that. If I was in that situation, I would have done everything exactly the same. There would be no change of course, no course correction, no deviation, no butterfly effect. Everything happened in such a specific way that led me to this moment now. I'm happy to be where I'm at currently, and I'm happy I went through what I went through because I would not be the wise and tenured person I am now. I would not have the, how you say, je ne de quoi, the cadence I have currently going through my body and my frame of reference in mind that is a very important factor to have when you are a person to be able to have the experiences that led you to be the person you are i don't think people change unless they're uncomfortable or they have something shocking in their life that forces them to change you have to lock in as the kids call it now you have to be able to proceed to be a better version of yourself just despite the atrocities that have happened to you and without these atrocities that happened throughout the core confines of my life i would not have been able to have the life I have now. Now then, do you have any pictures of you and Margaret? Nope, not at all. As a matter of fact, I think I have, I mean, my, my wife currently right now, I think I have maybe seven pictures of us together. I'm not a picture taker. Also, I would love if somebody would just think for 10 seconds. I, I know people on the internet see something and they don't think. They don't take a second to take a step and reel back for 20 seconds. If I was homeless, and I had just afterwards got out of homelessness and got with an older woman who probably doesn't know technology that well. Would either of us even care to have a phone? And prior to that, I was a part of the blue team. I was a crip. Why would I take pictures of the things I've done? Hey guys, just got done with a sale. Hey guys, just done this. Hey guys, just done that. That is psychotic and asinine in every sense of the word i i don't know why people would think about that that's just insane to me i i don't i don't get it that's that's strange to me I, it just feels weird to i i granted it's a valid question no question is a stupid question but i feel like getting to reasonable conclusions is also fair to do i, I just feel like that's fair to do i understand that people probably don't think of the questions to ask or things like that they probably just don't assume that or experience that that's fair and that's valid and i understand that that is fine and dandy now then next question do you think it was wrong to be married to a 90 year old with 18 nope that's legal i i it's legal to me doesn't matter to me to be fair let's think about it like this right let's say there was an 18 year old girl with like a 90 year old guy they be like, oh, that guy is a predator. That guy is going to die in two days. That guy is a bag. That guy is a paycheck. That man is a paycheck for that woman. That man is a pure paycheck for her. Yeah, but this is, this is morally incorrect. If you are homeless, 
if you are homeless, I need you to drop your morals for six seconds. If you are homeless, I need you for a moment to think. You can't be shy. You have to beg people for money. You have to do that. The stream restarted on itself because my internet connection is poor, but I'm recording it, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, right? It, you got to do whatever you can to survive because being homeless is one of the worst things on the planet. You have to do everything in your power and the soul in your confines to exist and live. Everything. You have to do everything in your soul to exist. That's important to do. Now then, next thing. Tell us about the countries you visited and how they impacted your view of the world. So track the under your market. So clearly, she clearly wanted the best for you. She did. I visited Asian-centric countries. I went to some places in Europe. I went to Alaska, which sucked. Alaska sucks. I went to Alaska before with my dad. But Alaska just sucks overall. It's a garbage place. I recommend never visiting there. It gets dark super fast. They didn't change my worldview that deeply because it was a shell shock. It was a shock to do these things so fast. It was an immediate two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Just immediate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Going to Thailand, going to Japan, going to China, going to all these places. They all were just so fast. And I would see people, everybody's the same from a realistic standpoint. Most people are just generally the same. And it made me really understand that humans are humans. They're just humans. No matter where they're at, people are greedy all over. People are garbage all over. People are ignorant all over. People are xenophobic all over. And xenophobia is, is different in different places. It's like different kinds of pain, one might say. Different kinds of bad is how I would phrase it. There's also different kinds of good, obviously, but there's also different kinds of bad is how I would phrase it in that way. They, they suck, by the way. I, I, we, we just went there for vacation time. We were there for like four or three days just to experience some food. That's pretty much it. We just experienced this food and we went to go through the forest and do some walks. A lot of people keep asking this question. It comes up a lot. Oh, she was 90. How was she able to do all these things? If you stay active throughout most of your life, you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can pretty much get through. Your bodies are built to move. If you're active now in your younger years, you can be able to move later in life. The reason a lot of people get messed up with their bodies because they drink and they smoke and they do all these things that ruin their skin and their body. Well, what if you met somebody who never drank or smoked? Have you ever considered that? That's a real thing. Do you freestyle or scripted? I have never scripted a single thing in my entire life. I refuse. It is weak to me to broadcast yourself and have a doctorate, a document of not having mistakes. Sure, you may be able to edit out certain things, but this is a task this is a measure of skill this is a challenge to myself to not use the words like or um to be able to continually speak off all the time that's how i operate everything i have is off the dome that is how i operate that's how i always operate any video you see is never going to be scripted it's never going to be anything of that variety that's how you operate yes diet sleep and exercise will get you a long way in life that's how it operates i'm just good at speaking really fast because i learned how to speak throughout the confines of my life because that is how i've lived i'm exceptional at speaking i am so mediocre at so many other things but when it comes to speaking and getting people to listen to me i am so exceptional at it that is my greatest skill and my greatest talent that is all i have hello once more how are you pleasure to make you pleasure to make your acquaintance now then the next thing next question the next question is what was the worst experience as a crip interesting 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 the worst experience as a crip i got jumped meeting up with this girl one time i was 15 and I got completely jumped. It was horrible. We had talked. We had kasmoogle smanging. We had, we had met up at a mall. And I was super excited. I said, Madam, how are you doing? She said, she's doing fine. I said, can I be doing you? And she said, oh, smooth talker. I said, I talk the way I walk. And my walk is clean. And then she proceeded to say, oh, well, you seem nice. I should have known that she was perhaps on the other side of the team considering she had a red bandana in her backpack. I should have known that, but I was not picking up all context clues because I don't read. I'm a Yu-Gi-Oh player. I don't read. Afterwards, I go over there, and I got pistol whipped. I got knocked out. I got everything stolen off of me. My foot was broken. I got annihilated. I didn't even get a lick back either. It was just horrible, 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 horrible. I hated every single minute of it. It sucked. Hate every single second of it. It was not fun at all. Not a fun time. Not a fun time at all. Now then, you ever see someone... Uh, lose lose their existence in front of me. Uh, yes, on both of those and those those things I have. Uh, have I ever uh, taken somebody out the server? Have I ever seen somebody leave the server? Correct. I have seen both, and I've done 
One of those things, yes. Welcome to my life. Woo, yes, you hate to see it. Anyways, how do you come up with such outlandish tales? I don't come up with anything. This is just my life. A lot of people assume that I'm just making up all this nonsense for views. Oh, this is all for views. This is so much for views. To be quite real with you, I don't even care if you watch my content. Both. Splunkin', it was both. Both. I've done both. You hate to see it. Anyways. It, I don't, I, 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 I just lived a horrible, disgusting life. I was in, I, I was in Detroit, Michigan, in one of the most prominent and most diabolical eras in Detroit, Michigan. I did not walk away unclean and unscathed. I also, I also hate this. I want to point this out since we can talk about it now. Please do not petition God to me. I beg of you. I don't care. Whether I go to Nirvana, heaven, or hell, it doesn't matter to me. I don't want anything after this existence. Please stop petitioning God as if, oh, d d give your life to God and he can help you. No, I'm not going to do that. I've tried already. I don't want to. Oh, d try again. No. Stop trying to convince me because it worked for you. If it works for you, that's beautiful. I'm so happy you have a religious dogma and doctrine to believe and fall behind. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy that you have something to live on and have in your soul. To feel that hole that Jesus, Yahweh, Je Jehovah can feel inside of your body. I'm so happy. Whether you worship Allah, whether you worship Jesus, I'm so happy for you. That is not me. Don't try to convince me to be something I'm not. I'm just somebody trying to live. I have my meaning in its own existence. Please, I appreciate that. Don't answer if you don't want to, but do you? Did you feel remorse? If not, is this something you, you had to learn how to feel? Remorse for the taking of lives? Not at the time, no, because it, it was re reasonably something I needed to do to live. I didn't really care at all. And that's why I got waste got free on legal insanity because I didn't have a like stopping barrier it was the thing i needed to do to live if i need to do something to live i don't have any moral implications behind it if i need to do something to live if i need to do something if it is the only way for survival i will do it without any regret later i felt kind of bad slightly i didn't they were trying to take my life in the grand scheme of things they would have taken my life later so no taking of a life is ever justified Feeling remorse for the action you've done is a step in growth and recovery, I feel, for most people, I think. I think it's important to do that. A lot of people are like, oh, it was self-defense. Later, one of the things I did was self-defense, but earlier on, it was very calculated and complicated. I don't want to talk about it during this one, but I've done horrible things uh, for survival. I've done horrible, horrible things for survival. That is just how I've operated. Robbed people, taken lives, taken people's livelihood had people become very close to me simply to get what they've had and explain that I was doing the actions and they didn't believe me. I've done bad things to exist. Yeah, I think I'm level 210 in Black Move Who Kong at the current moment. Now then, let's see what we got next. Are you still in contact with your mom? Does she know? She, does she know or did she forgive you and still love her as a son? Me and my mom are cool. Me and my mom are pretty chill at the current moment. Me and my mom are pretty chill, to be quite honest with you. We're we're fine. We're we're valid. We're cool. I don't hate my mother. She abandoned me when I was born immediately, and I'm still cool with her. We're fine. We are on the same wavelength. There is nothing that. Do you still believe in Jesus? I believe I answered this question earlier, uh, but because it popped up again, I will state this yet again because I want to get this across to anybody that watches me as a content creator. I am not religious. I do not appreciate religion. I do not like the aspect of it. I do not want a relationship with God. I don't believe in a higher power. I don't care to. Stop trying to convince me to believe in a higher power. I believe in myself. I am my own God. I'm a master of my own reality. I just want to be here. I just want to exist. I'm 27 years old. I've tried to be a, God, a follower of God. I've tried Islam. I've tried Buddhism. I've tried Taoism. I've tried everything. I've tried it all already. It has been worthless in every capacity every single aspect of it if you believe in god i'm so proud of you you are doing amazing and i hope that guides your more implications but the fact that you believe that i have to follow the same doctrine as you do i'm not going to be your echo chamber i refuse to be your echo chamber i really refuse to be your echo chamber i am somebody that doesn't have a strict doctrine of beliefs i'm just a good person no i'm not even a good person i'm a kind person that's it i'm just kind and fun 
that's all I am. And that's all I ever craved to be on this planet. That's it. That's all I want. Now then, next question. Buddy, sell your movie rights now. I don't want to be a part of the corporate Hollywood elites, the disgusting, vitriolic zeitgeist of high-tier millionaires that can spend my entire paycheck in a second on a meal. They can spend my entire yearly income on one dinner. I refuse to be that. I don't want to be that. I refuse to be that. I don't want to sell my movie rights. I'm like, oh, make a movie out of this. I don't care to. Someone steals this idea. Good for them. I'm so proud of them. They're going to miss so many small minutia details. I'm so proud of them. They're so amazing. Good. Steal it. I don't care. I just want to make content. This is my diary. I just want to make things that make me feel good. That's all I want to do. If I make this beyond that, if I like, oh, you should become a millionaire. I don't want to become that. I don't want to become that. I just want to make content and talk to people. I just want to have friends that I can speak to. I would love to speak to people. I don't want a documentary. I don't want nothing. I don't want nothing. I don't want a single bit of it. I don't want a single, I don't want anything of that. I don't want any of it. I don't. I don't care to. People, when I first posted this story on TikTok, people kept retching out to me. They kept saying, oh, well, guess what? There's, there's the fact that the matter of, you should, you should do this with it. You should do that with it. I want to write a book about you. I want to do this. I don't care to do that. I don't care to do that. I'm not going to make a movie about my life. I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm going to explain the tales about my life. This is strictly at the current moment until I make this my job. A way for me to document and not forget my life. I don't take pictures. I don't keep documents of anything. This is just a way to keep a core confines of how my life should operate. That is how I want to view things. I just want my life to be in bursts and spurts. That's what I want. How did your current partner react when you told her about Margaret? How did you tell her? My partner is asleep on the right over here. She is sleeping right there. She is waiting for us to go. When I told her about my 90-year-old ex-wife, she said, oh, cool. She didn't care because she has lived a crazy life, same as me. She has lived an insane amount of eventful things that have happened. If you live in Detroit, or if you've had a trauma-filled life, it is just regular to have horrifying things happen over and 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 over again. That is how my life has always been. It has just been horrible, horrible, horrible. Not a single good thing has truly happened in my life. Not one, really. Like, generally speaking, it has been a cavalcade of horrible, bad things happening over and over and over and over and over and over and over again to the point where it's made me mentally broken and I still persist and I'm still kind and I still want to be here and I still want to keep going and I still persist and so I'll be and so I'll be and so I'll be. My wife at the current moment didn't even care. She was, she just said, oh, cool. I told her about my felonies. I told her about my life. I told her about everything that has happened in my life. I told her I'm a narcissist. I told her that I mentally abused my ex. I told her everything. I'm telling you guys that too. And this video is going to be posted. And I'm going to make a video about me being an abuser. 100%. Because this is a diary of my life. This is you guys coming with me on the tale that is me. And my opinion sometimes. And how I feel about things. I'm not a commentary YouTuber. I am not a YouTuber that does story time. I'm just a guy trying to explain what he does. That's all I am. I guess you can consider me just a storybook. I'm a storybook. I'm not going to make animated tales. I'm not going to hire an artist. I'm not going to go out of my way to hire an editor. Because that's inauthentic. That's not me. That's them. That's cooperation. That's not me. So that's what I want from this. That's what I want. Now then. Do you think it'll be all right? In the future, I think we need to have one core concept. I think we need to have one enemy to di dictate all of our struggles behind. We need to have the snake. We need to have the mammoth, the behemoth. We need to have a, d a thing that all of humanity can come behind. And I feel as though that one day I can become that enemy that everybody hates collectively. That's what I want. I'm so satisfied with life. Every 
spent every single second of this life has been a journey and beautiful. I have enjoyed every second of it. The good, the bad, the horrifying, every single moment of my life has been a true confines of adventure for me. And I've loved every single second of it because I'm alive and I'm here. I have defeated cancer. I've stopped homelessness twice. I was abandoned as a child. I'm so happy to be here. I got through assaults of, from my manager, from adults. I've had people destroy me. I've had people ruin me. I've had my body riddled with diseases that could have annihilated me i am so happy to be alive because i'm still here and i'm gonna keep persisting against god against religion against myself against nature against me again against me again because it's a great quiet battle with oneself and i refuse to lose to a hater and if i'm ever going to be a hater to myself i refuse to have that happen and i'm going to force myself to be positive even when i can't because when i can't i'll do it and that's how i do this now then continuing forward that's how I think it'll be all right. What specific places did you guys travel to? Asian countries, uh, Japan, Thailand, uh, China, Europe. Did we go to I'm not sure if I went to Easter Islands later or with Margaret. I really don't remember. But I know I went to the Asian-centric countries. That was really fun. So that's specifically where we went to. Saitama is a place I went to in Japan, which was very nice. They have omurice there. And I remember the omurice. So that was really fun for me. That's just a thank you for your story comment. Do you ever get tired of being a sociopath and how lonely does it get? What are you trying to pursue that you are true? Given that you are fully aware of how intelligent and resourceful you are. I am not a sociopath, dude. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not a sociopath. I'm not. I'm empathetic. I care. I just am schizoaffective and it messes up my brain a lot. I have severe apathy about a lot of things because I care about the logic behind everything, but I also understand the emotion. My goal in life is just to understand people. That's it. I'm not intelligent. I'm not. I'm resourceful, but I'm not intelligent. Stop saying I am intelligent. I have sociopathic tendencies for sure, but I am not a sociopath. I, just because someone could have narcissistic tendencies and not be a narcissist. Somebody could have autistic tendencies and not have autism just because you have the quirks of being autistic doesn't make you autistic just because you have the fun parts of autism and not the bad parts doesn't make it any. some people may say but it's a spectrum you could stop right there i'm not here to argue that i really am not here to argue that i have sociopathic tendencies i am not a sociopath i am narcissistic and i'm manipulative that is how I operated. That is how my life has been. Because I had to live and survive to exist. If you have to survive, you drop your morals. That's how it operates. I'm having a great day. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Japan is beautiful. It's amazing. There's mostly walkable cities. And I enjoyed every single second of it. It was amazing. I wish I could live there. But sadly, I don't speak that language that good. So yeah, that was great. But for real. I don't know what that question is. So let's see here. Sir, you were a hero to that woman needed. She was an honored mentor. Life was strange. Gives me hope. Feel that thing. I appreciate that. Favorite Elden Ring weapons? Uh, Rivers of Blood. <laughs> I'll answer the question because it was asked. Rivers of Blood? Favorite anime? Other than Hunter Hunter, of course. Hunter Hunter is amazing. My favorite anime of all time was Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. Then strictly after that, One Piece, then Grand Lagan. Those are amazing. And Vagabond is one of my favorite mangas of all time. What happened to the iguana? Every animal that happened in the story, every animal, the cats, dogs, things that have variety, all the, all the things like that, all the animals, all of them confined together, they are with friends. They went to the Humane Society. I get rid of all the animals. I couldn't take care of them. If I have a dog... While I'm homeless, I'm worried about the wrong roof. Honestly, truly, that's I just don't feel like that's fair. It's going to get you there. So, yeah. So, let's see here. Can I have some money? I just want to be out of there. JK, I feel bad. If, if I had, the, I promise you, if I had the funds extra to help somebody, I would. I don't. I really don't. I, I am trying to live my best life. That is how I operate. What are your thoughts on school and the education system? I have three bachelor degrees and they're all completely worthless. I think they're garbage and worthless. I consider college to be a great way to learn about the world if you don't have a good avenue of exploration and if you're too scared to learn about the world in your own way, but I recommend picking up a trade. I appreciate you joining the Dairy Amada. I appreciate that deeply. Thank you much for subscribing to my Twitch. I appreciate that deeply. I'm mostly on Twitch for most of the time. I appreciate that. What are your thoughts on JPEG Mafia? Is that a question? That's a real question. What about that on JPEG Mafia? Okay, um, JPEG Mafia is narcissistic, egotistic, and I enjoy his music for the most part, but Peggy is a weirdo, to be quite weird with you. I was go I was invited to his album release party in Baltimore, and I didn't go. So, 
my friend Dorian was invited. The person you see in the beginning of my intros, uh, that does the song for my thing. So yeah, that's how it operates. So those are all the questions, and I'm gonna answer a few of them that I got personally in DMs. I don't want to reveal the DMs, so I'm just gonna explain them right quick. What happened afterwards? That will come in a story time later, but I went to Vegas and I lost all everything. I have $5,000 left and I lost all my money in a motel. And then afterwards I was stranded in the desert because no one tells me that Vegas is a desert. I lost my car. I lost everything and I thought I was going to lose my life. I got saved by a very racist man in the middle of the desert. His name was Dylan and I love him. He's amazing. He's horribly racist. He's cool and I enjoy him. He had a mail order bride essentially and she was Asian and she was cool. His no no square got blown off by a grenade in the war and i had to satisfy his wife and that's kind of the operation of how i lived there he taught me how to dry farm which was really fun he gave me a muscle car to get back to detroit and then after that i proceeded to live in amish country if you're worried about a timeline i'll do a timeline one of these days just in case you're curious about that but that's me speed running that story because i'll talk about it later one time and the grandchildren oh the grandchildren people keep asking about oh you should have given the money to the family oh it's as if you didn't listen to the story at all it's as if you're just saying that because you value family over everything not everyone's family is great not everyone's family is kind as a matter of fact you don't even have to listen to your family you don't have to be a part of your family some people's family sucks just because your mother gave birth to you and your father gave birth to you it doesn't matter they can suck they can horribly traumatize you some parents just suck and that's okay that is fine they just suck that they did they just suck it's okay if they just suck. My dad sucks. He really does. I want him to have a great life, but genuinely speaking, he sucks. He just sucks. I tell you that right now. That's just a whole thing that happens there. Now then, he is racist despite the fact that he helped me. Yes, I'm not saying in the confines of, oh, well, I'm not saying he said the n-word racist. I mean, genuinely, he had a membership card to the KKK racist. That's what I mean. I didn't know. I didn't know there was membership cards to the KKK for a long time. I, I thought it was a joke. He was a cyclops. He recruited for the KKK. He, he had a membership card. He was, by the legal definition, racist. Call me slurs all the time. He just wanted the fact of the matter that he could take hold and house and have work for him a black boy. That's what he wanted, and by all means, that's how it operated. I will talk about that later. But back to the family thing. Family doesn't have to be somebody you have to keep going back to. I, I, I'm so serious. Family can suck. Family can traumatize you. It, it's it's okay to not want to talk to them you don't have to talk to them just because they have half you and half of them in you half half it doesn't matter if you share dna blood is thicker than water but guess what you can swim much further in water than you can in blood so you may get further choosing your friends and family as opposed to sticking to the ones at your birth it's not even a real statement it's the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb it's completely opposite it can change the entire meaning in its entirety and actually goes back on the fact that the matter that the blood of the covenant which is the blood of the covenant which is the blood and bonds you share throughout your friends is thicker than the water of the womb because the water of the womb doesn't always signify what it means that's the real saying i just want to point that out to you right quick but you guys use religious backing to make my life seem like i should listen to the way your morals operate and I want to stick this a hundred times over, a million times over, a hundred trillion times over. I will never be an echo chamber. If you want to be uncomfortable, if you want to grow as a person, then be here. You don't have to subscribe. You don't have to like. You don't have to comment. Just be here for this experience for a little bit and realize that the small shelter capacity of life that you live can be so much more than just your small little fragile minds can even comprehend. And I'm not smart. I'm not intelligent. I'm humble and weak and fragile and scared and stressed and anxious and I'm so terrified of what tomorrow comes and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't care whether you think I'm smart whether you think I'm way wise beyond my years that's not true I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be I'm just a little bit mature and I don't put any more responsibility on me don't look for me for moral guidance don't look for me as a role model because I'm not that I'm just a guy trying to live each day and every second and I get claustrophobic when I think about thinking too hard about everything because I overthink and underthink and I'm just like you and you can be even better than me I want you to be better than me that's all I 
crave. And that is the video. Thank you so much. I love you. Goodbye.